happy Monday or whatever, dredging Monday, right. whatever you want to call it. Uh, we, uh, so give it a few minutes. Uh, well, uh, we'll just start. Mm. Metropolis Moody Blues Monday. Oh my God, yeah. Metropolis yeah. Moody Blues Monday. Uh, you, you have con depression after uh, you go to a big event like this. Not, well, not just you con miss everybody. You start. It, it was people tearing up. We were tearing up before we even left Metropolis, trust me. Right. Um, so we have Metropolis this weekend. Um, we, but our week actually started, our weekend actually started on Wednesday night. Right. So, well, real quick, how's everybody doing? Hopefully everybody had a good, uh, excuse me, awesome weekend. Uh, for those who come out to the Superman celebration, thank you so much. Uh, this is the first time in two years I have suited up, and it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, I was happy to see a lot of people. I've been told that there was a lot of people that missed me, that wanted to see me, and I am very sorry. Uh, I was up around moving, uh, moving. Uh, I guess moving so fast that there was... I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, literally, yeah. I mean, there were several people that were, that Saturday what, that was there that uh, I got, I mean, because they, they commented in the pictures that were posted on of me and somebody else's site that they were like, oh, my God, you were there. We missed you. And right. so uh, I am sorry that I missed everybody that wanted to get photos with me. Um so yeah, it's uh, yeah we were uh, we got there bright and early that morning. Left uh, what was that? We left probably. I think I got out of costume. What was it about three ish, four ish? No, it was about three thirty. I think it was because we had dinner at uh, uh and between three and three thirty. Because yeah, we went and got to eat the awesome Cortavinos in yeah, Metropolis. Cortavinos yeah. and that's no plug, but it's awesome. Cortavinos is an awesome place to eat. I plugged Cortavinos. It was awesome. Yeah, Cortavinos, yes. uh, yeah. Fat Ebbs. Uh, it's awesome to eat there. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, sorry. I did not get to see everybody. Um, but, no, it, it, again, it was an awesome weekend. Uh, awesome week and tiring week. Yes, long, yeah, it was very <laughs> long and intensive. Oh, uh, give me one of our flyers, please. <laughs> she is, oh, there we go. go. Thank you. You are messing with our mother wow. be. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so again, happy, uh, so we were happy to see everybody, everybody from Perryville to St. Louis to, and then also, uh, um, uh, uh, Metropolis. I mean, it just, uh, and it, it was like an extended family reunion. Oh, it was the extended family reunion over the weekend. So that was, that was pretty cool. Right. Um, let's see. So let's start off with Wednesday. Oh my God. Uh, I will, well, Wednesday. Well, go ahead. Wednesday was the trivia night. Uh, At J Street. Yes. Uh, want to now see here real quick. I want to say this. It is natural, as you can see my hair. There, yeah, it, it just falls. So, uh, <laughs> Dennis is the only one on there. Dennis. Nobody's joined us yet. Chris is here. Chris, hey, what's Chris Crider's with us. Uh, Wednesday. I want to thank all of our volunteers that came out Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Chris Wednesday Deadpool evening. looked awesome. Yes, uh, yes, Chris, your Deadpool was awesome. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for all of our volunteers for coming out Thursday, uh, Thursday, Wednesday, uh, for to help uh, at trivia night. So we had Chris, uh, well, Rachel. us two. We had Chris, Rachel, Rachel. And Paul, uh, all of you, thank you very yes. much for coming out and helping. I know how hard it is. To Rob was there as the lifeline for people. Yes. Right. Uh, we did something new this Swami. year. We we had, uh, instead of Stomp the Swami, it was uh, Ask the Swami. Uh, so Rob was the Schwam. 
Uh, Athena, outside. Oh, no. Unk, Unk, William Gala. That didn't work. Oh, girl. Go for a walk. There she goes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we're getting the dog outside. Um, so it was funny because it started off at five dollars at the early rounds. It was five dollars a uh, a question. Uh, all money got uh, any money that got raised went to Heroes for Kids uh, for the um, senior center and uh, Kenny Rogerson. Yes, and then as it got closer to the end, harder uh, the questions got harder, and so we lowered. The price down. What heroes for kids ended up raising roughly about a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So uh, had a blast. Awesome food at J Street. Yes. Um, so uh, we even had to help the Schwam with a couple answers. Yes. We did. Yes, we did. So I'm yeah, not, I'm not arguing with you. We did. Yeah. So it was just one of those things you could you could tell he was like, oh, and I tried to go. Okay, this like, is what it is. Hey, do you guys know this? Do you know that? <laughs> We're not supposed to be helping you. Yeah, probably not. So we did, and life was good. And he's pretty much if he would have been actually playing playing he probably oh he would have walked away with it yeah. um yeah. but we uh not only did they have a gift not only did the winner the winning team get something from j street but each participant got tickets to the heroes for kids comic con yes <laughs> uh, so they got tickets to the heroes for kids comic con so that was pretty cool correct um I, like I said, food was delicious. Uh, the people were awesome. <coughs> Plus, it's 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 good PR to get out among yes. the people, and so that they can see what we do. Uh, and after after the trivia night was over, a lot of people came up to us and said, "This is what you guys do. We didn't know you guys did this. This is awesome." Mm-hmm. We, we plan on being there at the show. Yeah, so I mean, I mean it's uh, uh, so, so we got to plug uh, we got to plug the Comic Con quite a bit once. Yes, yes, yes. Um, which is the main reason that we went there was to let them know that we were mm-hmm. doing the con so that we could raise funds for for our respective charities. And uh, yeah, it was a good way to get the word out there. Hey guys, this is what we do. We would appreciate the community support in doing it. And then yeah. All right, and they don't just get to see us as, oh my God, they're walking around in costumes, you know. So I mean, they actually get to see why we walk around in costumes. Right. So yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean that was fun. Like I said, good food, good friends, and uh, got to raise some money and talk about Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Right. So yes, that was awesome. Uh, Thursday we took a breather. You took a breather. Well, I took a breather. Uh, what did you do? Say hi to Aunt Doris. Huh? Aunt Doris. Aunt Doris is on. Hello, Aunt Doris. How are you? Uh, miss you all. Uh, so uh, Thursday, Jess and I drove down to Metropolis because they do a Super Bowl. Uh, basically, it's where all the uh, super Metropolis Super Friends show up early before all the festivities start on Friday and we meet at the bowling alley and right. just hang out and have fun, drinks, food, bowl, and catch up right. before all the madness starts the next day. Right. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people this year. <gasps> oh, excuse me. There was a little more subdued this yeah. year. I don't uh, know if so, I, the weather had anything to do with it or... Or maybe the price of gas. I don't know. But, you but know. no, it was fun. We got to see a lot of we got to see a lot of friends and stuff. So it was. Right. Uh, and then I mean, we didn't play any. Uh, we didn't play. We didn't bowl any. Uh, we just hung out and just talked with everybody to catch up. And then uh, uh, Jess and I drove back home. I mean, Metropolis from Perryville is only about an hour and a half away. So it's like right. driving from here to St. Louis. So right. not bad. Right. Uh, then we get to, we all work Friday. And then you and I just got the break then. Right. Boy, how is this? Just hold on. You're hold Superman. Hold on. You don't need to. Uh, now, how, how is this? Now, how is this? 
Now, how is this fair? I have done every event all weekend long. It sounds fair to me, don't it sound fair to you, Oracle? Jess gets a Jess comes <laughs> on. Okay, you did shopping Friday. What else did you do Friday? I did shopping and laundry and getting stuff together for Saturday, so bite me. Oh, she got you there. Yeah, and, the, and the, what makes it bad is by the time we got home, guess what was still on the bed that I ended up helping with? The laundry. So, then... <laughs> and who packed up most of the costume? Me. <laughs> but who had to pick out the right one? Her. Me. That's oh, because you out. knew you what you wanted. You really busted your buns on that one. But Friday... Keep it up. Uh, we went to... Uh, I mean, if, if we're going to talk about preparation, I, ha I had... You have your butler do it. Hush. <laughs> I'm the one that got Karis' costume ready. I'm the one that got my costume ready. Okay. And you now packed up. And then hassling her to get her stuff packed up is like a full-time job as well. Well, that's called being a parent. That's right? going to be a parent. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but no, sad, uh, Friday. Yes, Friday. We work. Jess does stuff here at the house. There we go. To get things ready. I for was us. doing that's preparation work. work. She did prep work. She did prep. Yeah. For, she got the, she went to Walmart and got her water for, uh, for the cosplayers. Uh, she did laundry because we were a little behind on laundry. Okay. Uh, because and, we hadn't been home. Yeah, we hadn't been home. So she did, she stayed home and took care of things here at the house. Okay. While you and I met up with Paul and I forget Storm's name. Uh, uh, Skidmore. Danielle Skidmore? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Danielle, that's it. Uh, up at the St. Louis Science Center uh -huh. for the, and it was X-Men. It was an X-Men theme. They do the first Fridays of every month, except for July. And I think December, no, January, and I think February, I think. Uh, but the first Friday of every month, they do a... Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Uh, they do a thing up at the Science Center. It's a theme night. Uh, and cosplayers are welcome. They do panels and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, this this month, it was the X-Men. So Gambit, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Storm showed up uh, representing Heroes for Kids and Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Right. Uh, and also, we, were, we got plugged. Hi, Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Uh, we got plugged. Uh, we were one of the sponsors for the event, which was awesome. Um, so, uh, with, uh, the event portion of it where my big fat polis did their panel, which talked about the history and the, uh, uh, the history and the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the best, how's the best, the diversity in X, in the X-Men. Right. Yeah. So, that's, that's uh, that's word for it. yeah. So we uh, so we got to be involved in that panel, uh, which was awesome. Right. Uh, so we want to thank the St. Louis Science Center. We want to thank uh, my big fat pool list and everybody in attendance uh, at the science center that came out to the science center for uh, this past Friday. Uh, and again, we got to plug Girls for Kids Tom Com. Yeah, uh, and then we entered into the. There wasn't a lot of cosplayers that ended entered into the costume contest, so we were asked. To, we didn't. Well, we didn't. We didn't sign up, so they just asked us to show up. Show up and walk the catwalk for the costume right. contest. So, and of course, we stayed in character. We stayed in character until the very end, and that was when I got to plug. Girls for Kids Comic Con. Um, I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah, yeah. So we got to plug Heroes for Kids Comic Con at the end, and they said thank you. You know, it was the thank you for us coming out. Where was the flyer that time? Hero, uh, for helping and plugging Girls for Kids Comic Con. I remember, but we're plugging. <laughs> so uh, we are check, out, 
the QR codes on there if you can see them. Go to the Heroes for Kids Comic Con. For the Heroes for Kids Comic Con and our Facebook page. For Heroes for Kids Comic Con. So, but no, it was a blast. We had fun. So definitely want to thank um, uh, the guys at uh, uh, My Big Fat Pull List for inviting us. Uh, we're hoping they, uh, we get invited uh, more often. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we I had a blast. I don't yes. know about you. Yes. Uh, I had a blast. So, uh, but, but I slept good that night. Well, I bet you did. Uh, yeah. uh, we were busy. Yeah. Did a lot of walking, did a lot of talking, and... I think I got home at about 11. I went straight to bed. I come home and helped her finish packing uh -huh. and putting stuff up. I did that in the morning. And then because the butler was on. You didn't have to deal with the big box store. <gasps> big box store. Post office? Oh, no. Wally World. <laughs> Just to get water. Yeah. Hi, Morgan. Um, let's see. And then, uh, Saturday was, we flew and you, we all flew down. Well, Robert, okay. and uh, we want to say, uh, welcome to the super friend, the, uh, Metropolis Super Friends family, uh, Robert and Rachel. Rachel. It was their first time coming, going down. They were virgins. So, uh, <laughs> Saturday, uh, Robert met us here at the house at six o'clock, uh -huh. and then we shot from here over to Villains Grounds, who is our partners in crime for the Heroes for Kids. Heroes for Kids, come on! Got our coffee needs, and then left. Right. We made it down there just before, oh, roughly about what was it? Fun. 8.30. 8.30. 8.30. Was able to jump into a friend of ours. Uh, uh, you each need one. Oh, okay. We jumped into a friend of yours. Huh? Into a friend of yours. We ran into uh, some, well, that's all, all of them, all, everybody down there. Okay. Ran into, got to, uh, ran into okay. got to uh, uh, get over to one of the hotel rooms where we could change. Uh -huh. And I started my day as... Uh, I started my day as Superman and went to town walking around, taking photos. Uh, had a blast doing it. Um, now, we met up when we first got there, and then pretty much we split up. You went one way, and I went the other. And, I mean, we do a lot of stuff together, so it was like... Uh, uh, I wanted my day to be more bonding with Karis. Than right. It's, it's, it's a family we, thing, and... My, it would have been fun if I got to do that with my daughter, but she took off with yeah. you and your daughter. Yeah, she's like, I want to hang out with Karis. I'm like, well, okay. And then, but, I mean, yeah. So. Uh, Adrian sure was a good handler, though. I mean, yeah. Uh, Adrian come down for a while. Uh, oh, yes, he did. Yeah, he come down for a while, or at least long enough for me to say hi. He showed his buddy around, and then they left, I guess. I mean, he doesn't ever really stay all that. Um, like maybe an hour or two? There was reasons. Uh, oh. Yeah. But no, it was good seeing Adrian down there. So right. we got to, I had all my kids, uh, so both my kids were down there. So we got to. Then he uh, was down there for lunch. a few hours. But, yeah. Um, so what. Did, uh, so this girl that Adrian used to date, did she go down there this weekend? I don't know. Because some young lady that looked a lot like her but was in costume. Came up and started talking to me like she did me. I didn't know her from from Adam, but, but she seemed uh, awful familiar. Okay, but that that's a lot of people. You are bad. Come on, that is true. Okay, <laughs> now got a question. I what did that. you guys do for your uh, for your Saturday down there? For our Saturday again, we've got two separate stories here. So what did you do Saturday? Because mine and mine's different. Okay, yeah, Karis. Wanted to see how the reaction would be to her costume, so we we walked up and down the street, and frankly, there was no other huntresses there. Right. Mm -mm. She had she hadn't lined up for a while with the little girls wanting to get their picture with her and all that stuff. So it, it was kind of 
bittersweet for me because I'm used to people coming up and getting their pictures with me. <laughs> they were getting their pictures with her, and then I was just sort of passing the torch. Passing the torch. Yeah, and uh, uh, it did do my heart good to go down there, not only to see her having fun, but I've, I actually had some people that were like, yeah, there's there's another Batman or two walking around, but as far as we're concerned, you're the Metropolis Batman. You're the guy that we go to see. So people were like, dude, glad you can make it. We came down to see you. Yeah. You, you know what that's like. So. Right. So I was like, well, it did my heart good. Uh, we, we, uh, we did go to Artist Alley. We, we, we uh, went into Hidden Gems, Collectibles, and looked around there and uh, visit with folks and yeah it was odd awesome. we didn't get any photos together this year which no. was odd and so no, I, mean, I, mean, I mean Karis and I spent more time taking photos on the street than we did anything else we couldn't walk five feet without somebody yeah. stopping mostly stopping for Karis and saying hey can I get a picture with you right you know so um, yeah she then we had a little bit of a, a snafu uh, my utility belt, one of the one of the pieces came off. So luckily, I just in case something like that happened, I had another utility belt. So we went to the car and I put on the new utility belt. And uh, as we were getting ready to leave the car, hey, why does it go? Why? As we were getting ready to leave the car, Karis goes, "Oh no!" She had taken off her mask and was wiping the sweat off of it. When she went to put it back on, the strap popped. So she couldn't wear her mask. Oh, so I'm like, oh. well, you need to get into your regular clothes. And she goes, no, I can go another few rounds. We just got to get this mask fixed. Right. I said, well, well here's Was that it. before or after the photo shoot? That was, that was before the photo oh, shoot. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, God, what are we going to do here? So I said, let's go into the chamber. And see if they can staple it, and you know, you can hide it with your hair, the the staples. Right. right. So we went over there, and they went, "Yeah, sure." And the, I got to give a shout out to the ladies of the Chamber of Commerce. They they were like, "Yeah, let's fix it for you." So they went, they took it, they stapled it, stapled it real good. Then they took a band aid and put it on the back side, so, so that, it didn't scratch her. So it right. didn't scratch her, and then and then uh, helped her style her hair. So that it covered up any semblance of a band aid over here. So nobody ever knew, nobody ever saw. And so her mask had to be repaired. So that was one of the projects I did today was I just repaired her mask. So yeah, on your day off. On my yeah. day off, yeah. By so, Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then we went over, got our pictures, and then after that it was Portobinos and on our way home. Oh, oh, cool. So, well, and of course, <coughs> remember you were talking about betting which one of the girls fell asleep first? Yeah. Karis beat her by about five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. I went I went to town, she was she was uh and and So uh, I would have won that bet. Because I, I thought you said I thought you said Tesla. No, I said Karis probably would. Well, yeah, I think because you get you yeah. on the bet then, yeah. <laughs> so but uh, yeah, Tessa was you know, just talking normal, and, and then by the time we got to Joppa Road, yeah, she started wilting. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm going past the bop of the radio. Past, and, I'm going past Joppa, and I look back, and Tessa slumped over with her head on the window, and Karis is like, <laughs> drool running down her face, and it was the most blissful ride I've ever had from compared to last year's year. to Perigo. <laughs> Where last year, Tessa and Garris <laughs> took my ears off. This year, I was like, oh, yeah. I almost fell asleep, man. I was so bored. <laughs> so, so then about about the time we crossed the bridge to get into Missouri, Garris is like, oh. We're almost home. Huh? And she goes back to sleep. Oh, Gary, you're talking about sleeping. Then we, then we turn on to the interstate, and that's when Tessa woke up, and she's like, we're very, very it. No. I went back to sleep. I'm like. Shut up, you two. You're over talking too much. Anyway, so so when we got her to go, dropped her off. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't far behind you. Right. Because, yeah, yeah, we're about a half hour behind you. And uh, the reason why 
And what happened was, yeah, it was just, uh, we were trying to get back up there to do some stuff. And by the time we got done with dinner, mm, excuse me, the stuff had already started closing down. Right. Because it wasn't that busy this year. And right. stuff started closing down a little early. So probably because they were sitting there bored. Yeah. So okay. we we uh and then no the mini con was scheduled to close oh, at five. Okay. Well, or the super con. I'm sorry. Well, besides running around for me, besides running around and taking photos with people, uh, we again, uh, I would shop people. I would go into the museum and in costume, and I'd go make a lap around the museum inside the museum uh -huh. when people were. Uh, uh, when people were looking, and uh, when people were looking inside the museum, and all of a sudden I'd walk up behind them as they're oohing and on over all the artifacts, and then I'd go, "Hello, how do you like my stuff?" And I'd go, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> I did that. I did that off and on all day Saturday. Uh, but then we made it down to Artist Alley, and uh, when I got down to Artist Alley, I had to do it. Uh, I had to go meet uh, the my uh, my high school love, uh, which was Lana Lang. Okay. So, and I'm, dre again, dressed as Superman. So we get down there. I got my autograph for uh, Lana Lang, uh, for Kristen Kirk. Uh, and she did sign it for Superman. So, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so I dressed as Superman. And she goes, she goes, how would you, because the, the handler was standing there. She goes, well, how would you like her to sign it? She goes, it's for Superman. And so that's how I said, perfect. That's how we sign it. So she's the one that actually right. suggested how to sign it. What so, is it with you and the Lanas of the TV shows? I don't know. <laughs> Lanas and the Loises. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're yeah. ooh and ah. So ooh, hey. Ooh, nah, nah. Uh, <laughs> then from there, uh, then from there, they had Mark Pello there, who played Nuclear Man in, um, and now, hold well, on, let's back up. Now, Kirsten Kirk has actually donated to Heroes for Kids once before. Right. Uh, and her, we got to talk to her a little bit about, we didn't have the tablet with us, mm -hmm. so we couldn't show her who got the photo, but uh, we did tell her to check out our Instagram page, because, Instagram or Facebook page, because it should be on there. And uh, so, uh, on the person that got it. Uh, she was like, oh, thank you, thank you. And, you know, that was pretty much our conversation with her. And just thanking her for what she uh, that uh, her donation and stuff for Heroes for Kids. Uh -huh. Well, then got over to Mark uh, Pillow, who played Nuclear uh -huh. Man and and uh, Superman for the Quest for Peace, the as everybody calls it, the bad uh, movie, yeah. the yeah. the the not so good movie. Yeah. So uh, I get the combo. Uh, I buy the combo pack, which is the uh, autograph and photo right which what uh, you know uh so i had to get this one uh this one here is the first meeting of superman and nuclear man with Le out on the balcony with uh lex luther right so with gene hackman's lex luther so uh that's the photo i got now when we went to rec now when, when i went to go get my photo with him it was different uh, instead of doing the normal, you stand side, shoulder to shoulder and do that, we recreated this photo. Right. Okay. Which was which was awesome. I mean, the you know both of us looking at each other at the mean mugs. So uh, then, while we were there, uh, his handler goes, "If you guys are doing that one, we got to do this one." Right. And I was like, "Okay." And it's the it's when it's as Superman and Nuclear Man are fighting, and they make it to the moon. So it's the square off, right? Where and uh, what it is, uh, but this is what I fell in love with. Uh, you know this this one here hit the I guess you could say well, it hit the feels with me uh, because uh, you know I have a lot of people that turn around and go, oh, well, you remember this? You you resemble this Superman or that Superman when I come out and do my stuff. Right. I'm like, okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Um, but then we do the square off pose and Mark's handler turns around and goes, oh, here, what? Hi, Matthew. 
Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, look forward to seeing you next, next month. month. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. We're getting ready to. We're with uh, Mark doing the second photo, and as he's getting ready, as we're getting ready to square off, uh, the handler turns around and goes, "No, you're you're standing because Mark's got a, Mark's my height, right?" So he's so he's like, "No, you got to change your feet. You got to do." It. So Mark starts dancing. Oh, you mean like this or like this or like this? Now I have no idea what happened. So Mark's going, oh, like this, like this, and I lose it. He loses it. We all start bust up laughing. And then he and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, we're right back in the stance, perfectly set, and we take the photo. Right. And afterwards, this was the compliment I got. Uh Mark turns around and he goes, Wow, he goes, that was amazing. He says, because that was a light, he goes, the camaraderie that you and I just had was exactly like the camaraderie that Chris and I had on set. He says, when he goes, we, we would do the exact same types of bantering while we're doing stuff in these scenes. And it was, we would banter back and forth. And then all of a sudden, boom, it was right back into the character. Right when, when the actor said go, it was, it was goof, goof, goof. Then boom, it was right there. And it was like, you brought back those memories of being on set with Chris. Right. He says, he, he goes, he complimented me on my suit and how I resembled Christopher Reed. And which, you know, again, for a lot of people, especially my age, that was the Superman we grew up with. Well, Andrew, that was the Superman we grew up with. You know, more of than we did Kirk Allen and George Reeves. It right. was more Christopher Reed. Right. So <laughs> being compared by the by a man that was on knew set man, that knew the man personally, that was an honor. I that right. was that 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 was, I was just like, oh my God, thank you. You know, yeah. it's it, it just so so again that that was definitely awesome. So those are two of my pieces I get to add and for uh, how he signed it to me was to Superman best, Mark Pello, Nuclear Man. Now, uh, he did donate the Superman 4, a Superman 4 poster that he had at his table. Right. And on it, oh, I, where is it at, dear? I'll have to show it. And this will, be, this will be up for auction at the Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Sweet. So uh, it is the poster of, uh, of Superman 4. Yes, Heroes for Heroes for Heroes for Heroes. Uh, so, uh, so it will be. Uh, it's like be a up. drinking game. Right I know. Now. Hear that, that Every phrase. time you hear Heroes for Kids, Comic Con. So what? Heroes for Kids, Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to be able to see yours. Oh yeah, Heroes for Kids, Comic Con. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, but he, he he signed on and when he signed it, he signed it. Destroying Superman, and then, uh -huh. uh, and then put Mark Pello, right. Killer Man. Right. So yeah, uh, so we got one of the we got that from Mark, uh, which was which was awesome. He awesome guy. Uh, this is the second time I've met him, and the uh, first time I got to meet him was back in I think like it was like 2011, right. and somewhere around yeah it was 2011. And I was just in street clothes, so it was before I even started doing uh, the superhero, the superhero stuff. stuff. So it was cool, full circle type right. deal. So you know, so yeah. And then uh, before we left, uh, well, again, like I said, then we went and all ate dinner. We changed. All of us ate dinner at Corvinos, excellent Italian restaurant in Metropolis. Uh, right across the street from Fat Ends, which is also good. Uh -huh. uh, not to be, uh, uh, not to be, what do they call it? Uh, not to be confused with Fast Eddie's. This is Fat Ed's. Uh, now, it used to be Fast Eddie's back like 25 years ago. Right. Uh, trust me, I know. Uh, they, they kicked her out, or they wouldn't let her in because she was underage. Mm -hmm. So it was first you time. You were dating an underage girl? I'm kidding. You were 
a second older than she was. Yeah, we're only we're nine only months apart. Nine apart. Yeah, so, so, so you uh, didn't wait nine months. I, I talked to my mom. My mom. Okay. I talked to my mom. That that's her. Okay. Uh, or talk to her mom. I just yeah it's, yeah whatever. She heard it up. Huh? I, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, we ate dinner. And then we decided to leave and go uh, back up to the Superman celebration because we want to try getting a few. We want to try getting a few of the shops in plain clothes before we left. Right. The SuperCon was over. The mini con was over uh, or closed for the day. A lot of the stuff had already shut down. Well, the Super Museum was still open. So uh, here is. My reveal, my uh, 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 reveal on purchases that I got, besides the two autographs, I got the, it is called the Superman DC Classic. So it's the light blue Superman uh, figure, Todd McFarlane's voice. So it's multiverse DC Classic Superman figure. Right. And then I also picked up the uh, Superman Hush. Oh, that's what the back of it looks like. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, then I also picked up the uh, Superman Hush uh, Todd McFarlane collection. So the, it says the Superman Hush there on the side, black and white. Looks like the Jim Lee uh, uh, art back of the yeah. on the back. It is. Uh, and then you have the uh, uh, toy there. It's the 85th anniversary of Superman. Uh, I'm going to have to check out this little... Uh, the DC thing here on the side. It looks like right. I, it looks like it gives me the the screen the the screenshot for that. So I'm gonna have to yeah. see if I can't get that for the for my phone. Or maybe so, a website where you can order more. Yeah, or I can order some more figures for it. Yeah. Just now looking at me going. Damn it. So so those are two, <coughs> two figures I got them for. Unless yeah, yeah. 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 And unless yeah. you can go to Heroes for Kids Comic Con. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so anyway. those are a couple of the items that I picked up down at the Superman celebration. So that will leave those out because we're talking a little bit about Superman celebration. A mm -hmm. yeah. um, little, little amusing anecdote while you're collecting your thoughts. Yes. You know who Tara Cooper is? Yes. Okay. She was a handler for Chris. Right. Okay. So Karis and I had gotten some drinks, rehydrated ourselves. Uh -huh. So I got myself one of those red, blue, red, pool, blue Hawaiians, but it was actually green. So, okay. so by the time we got to Arby's Alley, I had drunk it, and all we had left was a cup of ice. And so Tara looked at me and she said, "What well, you got there?" And I said, "Just ice." <laughs> I looked over at Kristen and she went. <sighs> <laughs> So, we'll start. Yeah. Anyway. So, Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Sunday. 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 We decide to, uh, Jess and I, well, uh, at dinner, well, let's back up Saturday. At dinner, right? Uh, we ran into Sassy at the uh, uh, Cordovinos. Right. And she was disappointed because we didn't get to uh, recreate our photo. Okay. So uh, I promised because, uh, and then I promised her that once, uh, so that I would come back and I would wear my suit. I wasn't planning on wearing my suit Sunday, okay? Uh, because again, we were looking at the rain and everything. I was like, oh, I want to go down. I want to do some shopping, uh, more shopping. Uh, but because Sassy didn't get her photo, I said I will put on. I will wear one of my other suits right. for you so we can get the photo Saturday. So, we get down there Saturday, or not Saturday, but Sunday. So Sunday we get down there, and everybody meets under the super uh, under the Metro tent, which is right next to the Superman statue. Right. For the big photo op that we do, it's the uh, super uh, the Metropolis Superman's well, Superman's super uh, friends super friends super friends yeah. of uh, Metropolis of Metropolis photo shoot, which is all of us together. Hey Travis. Hey Travis, how's it going? Uh, so while we're sitting there, I, it comes golly, golly worship. It, it comes raining like crazy. 
everybody's there. It's like, okay, we're trying to figure out how to do the photo. Right. Well, in the middle of all this, it lightens up just enough. We run over to the big mural that uh, Adam and uh, Morgan paint on the side. It's action comic number one mural on the side of the museum. Right. Mm -hmm. So we go over there, and the photo that Sassy and I do every year is the Lois Lane photo. The Superman, the classic Superman, right. Lois Lane photo, like this one. So only you're not flying. Right, only I'm not flying. So I jump. So she runs over, jumps in my arms, and we take our photo real quick. And then, uh, granted, I get stuck in front of the mural doing the posing for the action comic Like mural. you're holding up. The yeah, like we're doing a 3D mural. Uh, people come over and act like the goons going, ah, scre uh, screaming like they're running away from the car. Right. Uh, so I uh, did a few more of those. And then we're still trying to figure out how to do the family photo around the statue because it's raining like crazy. Right. So we get the bright idea, or a few of them get the bright idea of looking over at me and we do it in front of the stage because right. we can't get on the stage because they're working on the stage to get it prepped for the day's activities. Right. So they have me stand <laughs> on two chairs where I'm higher than everybody and then everybody crowds around me. Right. So I ended up becoming the statue, the Superman statue, yeah. <laughs> for the Superman, a super friend's Oh, so for the Metropolis of Super Friends. Well, you are in the off-season Super League. <laughs> yes. Uh, apparently, I got, apparently there was enough people that was asking, well, real quick, let me clarify this. Okay. I come down and I do stuff for Morgan and the Super Museum uh, during the off-season when it's not the, not the uh, celebration. Right. So... Uh, I come down, I'll do, uh, so Morgan calls me, uh, Morgan will call me and say, hey, we've got something going on down here. Is there any way you can come down? Uh, whether it be the weekends, as long as my Heroes for Kids schedule is not booked on that weekend, or if I can get off during the week, I go down and I help out the museum, or if there's, uh, and she calls, or if Metropolis itself has a has some form of thing going on, but I will come down through the museum right. and help out uh, with the activities in right. in town. So uh, I want to put that out there. That, so uh, for them to, for people saying that on the off season, uh, Superman, that's what that that's what that's meaning. Um, I come down, I, I, again, I come down and I help Morgan. Again, I, I, again, I live an hour and a half away, and as long as my schedule allows it, I, I, I help out everywhere and anywhere I go. I mean, we right. run Heroes for Kids, uh, and it's one of those things that, that's part of what Heroes for Kids does, right. is we don't just do cons, uh, like Heroes Those for Kids, kids Comic Con, uh, July 20th and 21st. Uh, yes, two days this year. Uh, but we do meet and greets. We do church visits, school visits, hospital visits. We do all of that. Uh, we do community functions. So I do get called in a lot of areas uh, to come out and do stuff. So uh, I, it's just a, it, it, to me, and uh, it's an honor. It, it, it's an honor for me to come down and do the stuff for Metropolis, when they asked me to come down and do the stuff for Metropolis in the off season of the celebration. So uh, I do want to thank them. Uh, I do want to thank them for calling me uh, and uh, letting me come down to do that. So that's what that, that's what that means when people see, oh, he's the off season Superman. Uh, that, I mean, uh, it's nothing on paper or anything like that. It's just a loose term. Uh, I go down there and I help out. I help out wherever I'm needed. Uh, because again, that's what part of Heroes for Kids does. Uh, so uh, that's where that comes into effect. So that's what that comes in. And Morgan, uh, Morgan has asked me on uh, numerous occasions uh, if I would come down and I would help with the uh, celebration or not with the uh, different things outside of the celebration. And that's what I and that's what I do.
Right. So, I mean, so I want to thank the Super Museum uh, definitely for letting me come down and do that. So, uh, I mean, again, it, it, it's like family. I mean, the town's the town's literally like family. So, I mean, everybody down there. Uh, and again, I think somebody put it uh, well. The official Superman uh, for uh, Metropolis said it best in a post that he had posted today. The crew, the volunteers, and everybody down there uh, does an awesome job. And he does an awesome job at the Superman celebration. I mean, he, I mean, we couldn't have a better guy uh, to portray Superman during the Superman celebration. So, I mean, it is, it's awesome. Uh, and I'm glad to be able to call him a friend. So it is, so it is, it, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, but yeah, that was our weekend. I was like, uh, oh, one other thing. Well, they twisted my arm. I got into the, con to the costume, costume contest. I don't think they twisted too hard. Well, actually they did. I don't like it. Come on, you know me. I don't like getting into the costume contest. I don't. I would he would rather, rather MC them. I would rather MC a costume contest and mm -hmm. have fun than be in it. Because, okay, that makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, because again, I've seen a lot of costumes and costume contests, and I've been in a few that have been very biased. Right. And I just, I, I, I can't stand it. Well, you got to so, remember, each judge brings their own bias to it. For right. Some, for some people... How much work did you put into right. it? Right. But you again, know, when, 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 but again, I have seen costume contests that it was because they're friends with them. Right. And that's or what I don't care for. And I've seen that happen. Or we, I've seen I've seen it where somebody will walk up with a costume that they've invested weeks and weeks and weeks uh -huh. of work on, and some I some had girl left. comes up in a bikini with a bat symbol on it, and she wins because she's showing some skin. Exactly, that's, that's you know, and, that, and that's what we've seen. I uh, I had been well. Case in point, Jess and I were in a uh, costume contest for Wizard World, right? Okay. The judges, two of the three judges, picked Jess and I's costumes hand down. We were the pro. We did. I did Eric. Oh, we did uh, the Crow and Raven, right? Picked our costumes hand down over the group stuff. The other judge threw 10 kinds of hell. It wasn't because our creativity and it wasn't because of our skit that we did. It was nothing about that. It was uh, she didn't pick us because she vaguely knew us. Uh, the other two judges didn't know us at all, but because she knew us, she didn't want to be picked. So she picked somebody else. Uh -huh. And it threw everything. And yeah, we had two of the three judges ready to go to pick us. And because there was, you know, it was, and that's their prerogative. And that was their prerogative. Right. But again, they didn't want to be seen as bots to tour us because we knew them. Right. Uh, but again, you have that kind of stuff. <coughs> and I'm not saying anything bad about it. We were the runners up. So I, I, I mean, uh, I mean, and. I'm not, this is one of them was one of our celebrity members, God rest his soul, because he did pass. One of the guys, and this was before he was a celebrity member, but it was Jason David Frank that actually picked us. That was actually one of the three celeb, one of the three judges that actually picked us to win. So yeah, um, so but I entered in at number six, not nine, but six, uh, and I ended up winning best Superman slash Clark Kent. So I thought that was pretty cool for the uh, 46th Superman celebration uh, of Metropolis uh, Heroes and Villains Costume Contest. So, uh, I mean, I want to thank the judges that voted for me. And, uh, I had my little skit was basically, um, Picking on Batman. I got up there, I, yeah, I slammed Batman. I walk up there, I shake uh, the Metropolis Superman's hand. And then I walk up to the mic and I went, I went something to the effect of, again, it's been, uh, do you guys have a Batman on I this said, world? I said, do you guys have a Batman on this world or on this earth? And, uh, I turned and I said, well, I said on my earth, I said, all the rain stays in Gotham. Right. 
And then I, and everybody was like, ooh. <laughs> That's not really a ooh thing. Uh, it, oh, it was, what? Well, it was the way, it was, it was the way I did it. It was the way I did it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it was just the way like, I did it. Like, admire. Yeah, that's what, the rain doesn't dare. Well, that, that, that's, that's, that's what it was. It was what you were yeah, that's what it was. All yeah. the rain stays in Gotham because that's where Batman's at. Yeah, yeah. So I keep Batman over in Gotham. Then that's what was uh, basically something like yeah, that. Like I never was just power to keep the rain. Yeah, it was like it was like turn around. I said, I, 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 like I said, it was just one of those things. I looked back. I, I somewhat kicked my head back and looked at the Metropolis Super. And I said, the, I said on my earth. I said, yeah, we keep the rain in Gotham, right? And everybody was like, ooh. <laughs> it was like it was like that because uh, at that point. The Metropolis Superman, he, he's standing there with his hands like this down by his belt. And then when I said, yeah, we keep the rain in Ludo. We keep the rain in Gotham. He goes from this to... <laughs> so, I mean, and it did start and it did start raining during the costume contest. And it started out even more. Because that wasn't originally what I was going to say. I was There was a Batman in the crowd. And I was originally going to just beeline everything for him, uh, but it was just one of those things. And he had his mask off, so it was like, darn it. So it was just I got up there and it was just like, okay, it, everything flipped, and that's the way it went. And so literally, it was all ad lib. I wasn't thinking, and I wasn't thinking. It was just like, yeah, that was how it went. And yeah, so uh, and then uh, yeah, other than that. Uh, I mean, Sunday was good, awesome, except for one item, and it, it's the more I keep thinking about it, uh, I will have to. Uh, I'm not going to say any names or anything like that, right? But uh, all I can say, mentioned. it just have to be mentioned. Uh, okay. One phrase, huh? One phrase. One phrase. Cosplay. Oh, Tessa. What? Cosplay is not consent. Cosplay yes. is not consent. I don't care if you're friends, enemies, or whatever. Cosplay is not consent, please. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and uh, we'll leave it at that. If uh, anything goes, we'll just leave it at that. But uh, other than that, it was all, I mean, I had a blast Saturday. Uh, I had a blast Sunday. had a blast Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My butt is tired uh, because we have been going nonstop uh, since, Wednesday, yeah. since Wednesday. And I can't wait. Uh, this weekend's the Father's, uh, Father's Day weekend. Yeah, uh, we do. So it's, uh, and again, uh, it gives us time to work on stuff for... Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Um, <laughs> Come on, boys, get it together. We got synchronized here. Heroes for Kids Comic Con. There we go. Slightly better. <laughs> if you can do better, get over here and get in front of the camera and do it. Yes. No. Okay. Then quit your knickknacking at it. And I no. said that the best. Way. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, what we what do we have coming up next, huh? Heroes Complex. Heroes Complex and the date. June 29th, starting at 4 p.m. And that is in St. Peter's, Missouri. We will be up there help. Uh, we will be up there with the other cosplay organization called the, Gate, uh, the Gateway Guardians. Uh, we will be assisting. Uh, we will be up there with them. I think. Helping and assisting with the Heroes Complex grand opening. I think uh, right at the moment we have... Uh, Superman, Batman, or Captain America? Um, oh, no, you were doing Batman because they Batman. advertised you as Batman. Okay, then I'm doing Yeah, uh, Superman, Batman, um, Deadpool, Thor, Harley, Catwoman. I think that's who we've got so far. Okay. Of our, of our members. Of our members. Of our right. members. Uh, now, I will be playing double duty because, well, so will you, because we are both, again, we are Heroes for Kids members. Well, we run Heroes for Kids, right. but we are also members of the Gateway Guardians. So, uh, shout out to them as well. Uh, 
So, uh, so look definitely look forward to being up there on the nineteenth uh, at the uh, Saint Peter. We'll be in Saint Peter's at the uh, Heroes Complex. So that that is going to be awesome being up there and uh, meeting all the people up there. And we'll also get to do a little bit of <coughs> networking for Heroes for Kids Comic Con. <coughs> He's ch- uh, hacking up along. Come on, come on. One, two, three. Heroes, Heroes for, for Kids, Kids Comic Con. There we go. That was a little late, but hey, we did yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need some of the paper. Yeah. Up along here. yeah. Uh, smoke them if you got them. That's how Batman gets his smoky voice. Yep. <laughs> I've actually, done, say, that. I've actually done that before, like being in the costume contest, and they're like, okay, what's your name? Batman. I'm Batman. Hold on a second. <coughs> I'm Batman. And then they're like, oh, you need a throat lozenge? Yeah, that would help. But, uh, and then from there, for after that event, we have uh, Toy Man in St. Louis. Which is the weekend beef? No, before after that we have the Fourth of July celebration here in Perryville, right? To promote Heroes for Kids Comic Con, <laughs> July twentieth and twenty first, nice. uh, and then we will be at the Toy Man show uh, for uh, a big uh, for their July show, which is the weekend before. Heroes for Kids Comic Con, and we will be. Um, you did that just because he was trying to eat some ice. Yes, we will be networking and promoting. They will be helping us promote Heroes for Kids Comic Con, and then you're all are in sync now. You're doing and good, then, and he's even doing that with a mouthful of ice. <laughs> and then the superhero training. Yeah, and then the following week is. Heroes for Kids Comic Con. <laughs> so where we have, get your paper up. Where we have special guests. Margaret Thomas from The Mandalorian and the Book of Old Fett. He was also in uh, just a few other things: Studio Six Six Six, Sleepy Hollow, and. Um, Team American Horror Story. Huh? American Horror Story. Uh, yep, American Horror Story. Yeah. And uh, Land of the Lost. Yes. We also have Aaron Evans, uh, awesome D&D writer. Right. So then we have the talented artist slash actor, Matthew Axley, Matthew Axley uh, who was just on and said hi to us just a little bit ago. Uh, unless he's still on. If he's still on, please say hi again. Uh, we had Matthew actually on here just a little bit ago. Um, he's been on The Gifted, and he's been, been on, on uh, Nashville, True uh, Crime, Ozark, Story, True Ozark. Crime. He yeah. was in the movie What Men right. Want, which is the sequel to Mel Gibson's What Women Want. Right. Uh, he uh, he was in the Clint Eastwood directed movie Richard Jewell. Right. Uh, matter of fact, I just watched a documentary thing that he played a police officer in and it was on Tubi. So right. he's got several things on Tubi that yeah. he's in. So, uh, and then we have the talented Steve Geiger going to be here. Uh, Steve Geiger did uh, work for Marvel Comics and a little bit of DC, but uh, Bloodshot, he worked on Bloodshot, he did Batman, he did, and for Marvel Comics, he did The Punisher, Spider-Man, and The Incredible Hulk. And there's a list of other... I think he may have even done some Daredevil. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, So check them out. Uh, It's going to be an awesome show. So July 20 and 21st, uh, Perry Park Center, 800 City Park Drive, uh, here in Perryville, Missouri. Uh, we have tickets online. Uh, we have VIP tickets. Now, VIP tickets. We are only doing 30 VIP tickets. 30 VIP tickets early bird. <coughs> that is it. So. Once they're gone, they're gone. One, yeah, once they're gone, they are gone. Uh, 
So get them while they last. I think, uh, and I think we've got some that are already going. So I was trying to get Matt to join us, but unfortunately, he is unable to, as he is prepping for filming tomorrow. Ah, well, there we go. He is prepping for filming. So, uh, so again, what do you, he? Uh, and again, these people will be having panels. Uh, we have panels lined up. We have games. We have all kinds of stuff for people to do throughout the day besides checking out our awesome vendors. Along with checking yeah, out. Yeah, along with checking out all of our vendors, our writers, our artists. Uh, so, it, again, it's going to be an awesome weekend. Um, so look forward to it. Uh, again, our fifth annual Heroes for Kids Comic-Con, July 20th and 21st, here in Perryville, Missouri. Right. Check it out. And, uh, go to heroesforkidscomiccon.org. Has all the information. Has a list of our vendors. Has a list of our guests. Uh, you can hit the. T uh, you can click on them. It'll pull up the stuff that they. It'll pull up their bios. Uh, you click on our vendors. It'll pull up their bios on their stuff. Um, you can buy your tickets. You can. Uh, you can sponsor. For sponsor the show. for the show. That is. Uh, there's tons of things that you can. Go oh, there's there. yeah. yeah. Uh, our spot, our, our uh, uh, recipients this year are the Perry County Senior Center here in Perryville and the Kenny Rogers Center out of Sykeston, Missouri. So, I mean, two awesome organizations uh, to help uh, help not only our children but also our elderly as well. So, uh, so yeah, if anybody wants to sponsor. Uh, basically, you uh, click on the link inside the Heroes for Kids Comic Con org page. It'll take you right to the sponsorship letter. Uh, fill it out, send it in with your donation, uh, your name you know, of your business. Uh, if you want to stay anonymous, uh, we'll even keep it anonymous as well. But one hundred percent, you hear that? Yes, one hundred percent of your money. Goes right to the once expenses are paid uh, for the show. One hundred percent of the money raised at the Heroes for Kids Comic Con, Heroes for Kids Comic Con, <laughs> goes to those two organizations. Yeah. So uh, please, like I said, help us out. Um, it, it, it's again costume contest panels, more and uh, and a lot more. Uh, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's for all the marbles, folks. We want to try and get record numbers. Yeah. I, I, yeah two so. days. Yeah, two days. That's why we're shooting for two days. Yeah. So we can, yeah, so we can make a more sizable don donation. Today. And it's yeah. gotten to the point, well, it's already gotten to the point now that we're trying to figure it out. Uh, Dennis and I, uh, uh, we don't want to... Uh, discourage anybody that wants to come see Dennis and I in costume, right. but Dennis and I, <coughs> with the uh, the powers that be uh, and uh, that do all the stuff behind the scenes, uh, have asked Dennis and I to not necessarily put the costumes aside for the Comic Con, but maybe right. select an hour, uh, what about two hours of the day. Or two hours one day, two hours the next, uh, to set aside for uh, doing autographs and uh, photos. Well, we'll do autographs throughout the day, regardless right. whether or not we're in costume or not. Right. But for photo ops with uh, Superman, Batman, or a Gambit, or Wolverine, or whatever, 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 whatever the characters whatever, we're yeah. going to uh, do the do those weekends, uh, do the weekend. Uh, but uh, we just haven't figured that part out yet. That will be listed somewhere. Uh, but uh, Dennis and I will actually be taking a, not necessarily taking more of a... In instead of standing up on the stage and being the face, we are going to... We'll still be standing we'll be, on the... We'll, we'll, we will still be doing that, but... It'll be also be the, the, hand, <laughs> the hands and, and the backbone of getting things done. Uh, you know... Yeah. Mary, Mary, Jean, Mary Jo, Joe, and Mary Jo, and David, and Jess are, and Jess are working tirelessly to provide a good show experience 
but uh-huh. with it being two days, it's getting big enough. They need all hands well, on deck. Yeah, it's not, all hands on it's, that, right. it's not really fair of them to be carrying the whole load while we just stand up on stage and hey, here we are. You know, right. we're going to jump in. We're going to help them out, and yeah, we'll set aside a little time for for the folks who who come to see Superman and Batman or whatever we're mm-hmm. playing. So, but yeah, we're going to we're going to have more hands-on approach. Yep. So, so I'm right, looking forward. So again, looking forward to this year's uh, Heroes for Kids Comic Con, yes. July twentieth and twenty first. No, nope, it won't stand up. I was trying to set it up right here, but it wouldn't. Do it. Uh, Hi, Brandy. Brandy. Hey. Talk Hi, Brandy. And by the way, Brandy Cochran, your Cockrum. Cockrum. Uh, your uh. uh your kitty pool. Kitty pool was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, I honestly, I think you should have entered into the costume contest with Chuck. Uh, uh, Chuck did awesome too. His sloth was awesome. Uh, his yeah, yeah. His, his sloth was. I mean, yeah, that was. Uh, hey, you guys! Oh, and so we, he had on the Superman T-shirt. Oh, it, 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 put it this way: it looked like he walked right off right off the movie set. Oh wow! I mean, it was that spot on. It was it was awesome. It was, uh, and he did win. I, I mean, the, he he got up there and did the he he did the voice. He did probably a little bit over the minute long uh, uh, right. skit that they wanted us to do. But yeah, it was one of those things. He had everybody going. Oh, dude, that was yeah. It, yeah. it was. Yeah. Should have won crowd favorite or something. Uh, yeah, he should have. I mean, that was... Yeah, Slaw, Slaw rocked it. Uh, Chuck rocked it. I, I thought, anyway. The guy that dressed as Beetlejuice uh, did awesome, too. And then he started running his mouth. Uh, well, playfully, it was in character running his mouth on uh, while the judges were doing it. And I got the... Uh, I got the MC over to me. I said, "Hey, I said uh, he's afraid of the Ghostbusters." I heard him go. I said, "He said, he told us that if he got, I told him if he got out of line, I was going to holler at the Ghostbusters." So where are the Ghostbusters at? And then all of a sudden, you had three of them stand up, and he goes, "Oh, I'm not here." But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, oh, it it was it was a fun time. It was a blast. Um, yeah, I mean, heck, uh, again. Every night this week, every night this past week, I have hit the bed and passed out. I mean, it has been, uh, I mean, well, it's always like that this time of year. So it's it's con season, so especially yeah. when you're working up to Harris for Free Kids Comic Con. If anybody of our listeners would like to post some of these flyers, we've got only a limited amount of these. Uh, but if anybody would like any of our flyers to put in our ta- in our, uh, like in our town. Well, Jess and I would feel happy to meet in a location and give you some of these flyers so you can post them in like your comic book store or a gaming store or something like that, that or a place that you have a lot that will allow it where there's a lot of business coming through. That way we can get more of that. Again, the more we can get this out, the better. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome this year. Um, again, the ladies have put a lot of work into it. Uh, I can't wait to see all the stuff that Villainous Grounds is putting in, putting together for uh, the Villains Cafe. Uh, uh, I mean, the drinks, the uh, the the snacks and stuff that they're going to have. I've already uh, heard about some of them, and yeah, they're going to be delicious. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm anxious. I'm ready for it to go. Uh, I have about 38 days left. I know it. Uh, would you hush? A little bit more than 38 days. Is it? Yes. Wasn't that 45 last Monday? So we're... Not it's going to be close. Let's find out. 38 days. Give or take a day. No, you said 38. You said 38. 38. There is 39 days, 13 hours, ha! 58 minutes and counting. Why is it you get like a two-day two, two day buffer zone? He didn't either. Neither one of you got it right. Yeah, I, I, I was closer. <laughs> yes, he was closer. It's 
like horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah, it's like 39 days. What, in a couple hours? It'll be 38 days. So yeah. Big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you still can't count. A couple is two. or 13. Ha. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, children. You don't hang with the people I hang with. <laughs> okay, let's simmer down. Now. Simmer let's down. Let's get back on track. Now. Hold up. Uh, so, yeah. Now, for, uh, personally, I blame you. Huh? Personally, I blame you. For what? Not giving me proper supervision. And what am I supposed to do? Act super? Without supervision. I'm going to give you supervision. supervision. Okay. <laughs> You're Superman. You're supposed to have super. Well, you're supposed to have the supervision aspect down pat. Yeah. Uh, but no, that uh, doesn't mean X-ray vision or you know heat vision or none of that. Okay. Y'all are both supervised. <laughs> Darn, not very well, obviously, no, because she has to keep threatening us with, with Mongolian beef. Yeah. So or beef tips and gravy. Yeah. It's getting further and further away. Right, right. The bullets, uh, shotgun shells, shotgun shells. That's it. We have made those in a while. I don't know. I found some pretty good recipes. The way y'all are acting, I ain't gonna make them for a while. Oh, look what you love. Look, look me. <laughs> I found some pretty good recipes. No cheeseburger on egg rolls. <gasps> I haven't had that yet. No taco snack cups. Uh, bacon cheeseburger lasagna was another one that I found. You guys are gonna make me cry. Uh, I have found, I have come, <coughs> I have found some awesome recipes and yeah uh, yeah pizza what is that pizza pasta mm-hmm. was another one I found. So yeah, that sure sounds pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I found some really good recipes on TikTok. Matter of fact. Yes, I have a TikTok account. Uh, possibly looking at doing one for Heroes for Kids. Yeah. So, but, uh, shoot, it's after 8 o'clock. Yeah. So we're probably going to have to wrap this up before too long. Right. He's got to go pick up his squirt. I got to pick up the hunters. Yep. For the show. So, uh, See, uh, what, have you heard any comic book news? I, I'm looking forward to, oh, we were talking about the X-Men earlier today. I'm looking forward to the relaunch okay. of the X-Men titles here next month or right. end of this month, next right. month. Yeah. So I'm only getting three of them that I'm aware of. Is, is Chris Claremont having anything to do with this? No. Really? Uh, not this run, but I think he is working with Marvel, but it's on something different. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that sucks. So, uh, Gambit and Rogue actually lead a team for, uh, actually lead the Uncanny X-Men team. Yeah. Okay. So, husband and, wife, husband and wife lead the uh, Uncanny X-Men team. Speaking of X Men, uh-huh. I noticed on the Coke bottles for the original flavor, they had a picture of Wolverine. On, on did the you label. get one? Yes, I did. Thank you. Did you keep the bottle? No. Well, not the collector's on. I mean, I've got. I if they had one now again, if they had one with Gambit on it, I would probably. Yeah, I would. That, well, depends. We did the Superman when NASCAR was doing the stuff with Superman. Right. The, and uh, NASCAR were doing the stuff with Superman, and they were also p- uh, partnering with Pepsi. Right. So they had a lot of the Pepsi uh, Superman cans right. with the NASCAR stuff on it. They had awesome cans and stuff. Right. We, again, know how they always tell you, Keep them, put the keep the soda in them, blah blah blah, because they're worth more. Well, apparently, that doesn't work well in today's day and age cans. They're not made the same as what they were 
when you find a can that's 60 years old and it's still got the liquid in it. The, the right. aluminum is made totally different. Right. Uh, so back when, uh, I think it was Return of Superman, Superman Returns, okay. uh, and they, uh, but NASCAR did a bunch of Superman style cars. Right. And I bought uh, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, and all them, all, all the soda cans. I at least bought one because they were, depending on the racer, their the cans were different, their cars were different. Right. I bought one of each car that was different. Okay. Right. And one for the can. So had them setting up in the cabinet. They were in climate controlled. I mean, they were in my house. And right. yeah, we went to go, uh, get something out of the cabinet one day. Oh, uh, well, one day we're looking around, we're in the cat in the kitchen and we've got ants galore in, on one of the cat running up and down. It looks like a mine. It looks like a little train going up and down our cabinet. Right. I'm like what the heck? So I open up the door and three of the four cans that came out that year busted and went, Everywhere, oh. I had to pull everything out of the cabinets, wash everything. I had to pull the drawer, the uh, shelves out, wash all them, wash the cabinet down on the inside. Oh God, it was it, it was unbelievable. Spray for oh the yeah, I had to spray for the ants the whole nine yards. I mean, it, it was it was a disaster. Uh, so again, that, that's what I was. So next time, get you one of the get you a bottle of the can, you drink it. But then rinse it out real good and just right. see it save the can because yeah, saving the soda or whatever in it. Right. It yeah, the, I mean, it's right. not like I mean, even now, it's like touring uh Elvis Presley's uh uh Lisa Marie. Uh-huh. They've got his bar. His bar in the Lisa Marie is still stocked with what it was stocked with when he passed away. Okay. The cans, the bottles of Gatorade, whole nine yards right. is all the original stuff. Okay. And they've still got liquid in them. Huh. Does that tell you how the, your, they make stuff now mm -hmm. compared to what they made it back in the 70s? Well, you got to remember that soda is a mild acid. Well, yeah, I know. You know, like if you, if you took like your... Uh, like your kid's baby teeth and threw them in a cup and poured some coke in it, within a day those teeth would be dissolved. They'd be gone. Because, right. Because it's a mild acid. So it does not surprise me that they went the cheap route with the cans, and now the cans do not have the ability to withhold that acid for any amount of time. Yeah. Um, it might last months, who knows? But if it's... Hey, look, the birds are probably pecking at my ear again. Yeah, that was one of the questions in the trivia thing about which <coughs> backwards. Yeah, sunbird. Yep. But no, uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to it. We've got another. Oh, we've got another trivia night before our Comic Con, and that is over in Illinois at the Landmark, Landmark and that is on July tenth. July tenth. July tenth. Okay. Uh, and uh, so be prepared to come out for that. That's going to be an awesome day. Uh, not only, I, I'm assuming that the trivia people will be doing a prize through the landmark, right. but Heroes for Kids for the winning team will get tickets to the Heroes for Kids Comic Con as well. Sweet. So come out, have your comic book and pop culture knowledge. And again, it's not just all pop culture because they threw in two categories. Granted, they had comic book type questions, but they had like an animal question, and yeah. it was but it was like animals with super specific powers. abilities, right? Yeah, like for instance, the hummingbird that can fly backwards, right? You know, like what what, what, what animal, animal can climb into the walls or walk, yeah, the walk upside down? What animal? Yeah, right. What what uh, has the strongest bite? Yeah, stuff oh, like that. So, and now, granted, the the questions aren't going to be the same as what they were at this last one. So, right. don't think you can cheat. Right. So, uh, so again, looking for looking forward to that as well. 
Um, is there any questions anybody would like to ask? Yes, Dennis or myself. Uh, Dennis, your phone so shows two. How many do we have? And, and I'm probably one of them, so. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, look for, uh, again, we had a blast this last weekend, uh, this last week. Um, Jess, uh, well, I guess if nobody else is on here anymore, somebody just did a thumbs up, or was that you? That was me. Okay. So who was at the game the thumbs up? Say something on here. It's probably, it, it says Jessica's watching, and I'm yeah. watching, so it's probably just us two. Um, well, I, if nobody else is on here, um, I just want to wrap this. You know, we can go ahead and wrap it up. That way, you can get your stuff taken care of for yeah. uh, going to pick up your uh, mini offspring, <laughs> huh? Your offspring. I uh, saw the Facebook Brandon was there. Did you get to talk to him? No. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. Technically, did. he did. Uh, like a hi, how you doing? No, actually. I was getting ready to do a Sunday. I was getting ready to do one of my trips into the museum, right? And the lap around the museum. And as uh, we, I walked in, I was getting ready to turn to go into the museum. And Morgan, uh, Morgan and Adam come walking out. And lo and behold, Brandon Ralph was right with them. So they took Brandon Ralph into the museum. So the pictures that you see on the Superman museum page where he's signing everything right yeah it was right before i walked in okay so i met him right after that in the museum he comes walking up to me hi superman how are you shook his hand and i'm like well uh, hi sir how are you you should have said hi adam it's well he he recognized me too he's like i said man i said how you doing i said uh, i said my uh and he was like i've been doing good thank you and then it was one of those, it was one of those, so yeah, he goes, he looked at me, he goes, Kansas City. Like, yeah, I said, how you doing? I said, it's been a while. He goes, yeah, he goes, nice seeing you again. And, it was, and then he walked, and then he was on his way to get catch his plane. Right. So and they were on his way leaving, so we, we couldn't really step and talk. So yeah, I did get to, uh, I ran, literally ran in to Brandon Ralph. I wonder, I wonder where they, which airport they took him to? Did they take him to Lambert, or did they go down to Memphis, or where? Uh, they they probably go. They probably go down to Paducah. Paducah. Well, yeah, I guess Paducah. Does but, it, but well, and then flying to to a, a, a more metropolitan yeah area like Memphis or something, and then he flies a regular flight out of there. I believe so. Uh, and depending on the charter, well, depending on the charter, they uh, well, for instance, like Cape. Cape actually now flies out to, uh, Cape now flies out from, out to Nashville, right? So if we have stars that live in Nashville that don't want to take a four hour drive, the four hour drive, we can buy, we can buy 150, I think it's like $150, $200 plane ticket right. and fly them from Nash from the Nashville airport to Cape. And then just pick and then pick them up in K. Yeah, yeah. So, so they may do some, and they may even do that in Metropolis. I don't know, but I think a lot of them go to Paducah. I think a lot of them fly out from Paducah. But yeah, meeting Brandon. Uh, that's the, I think fourth or fifth time we've met Brandon Ralph. Um, he's uh, he, he's been awesome uh, every time we've met him. The first time we met him was at the Superman celebration uh, many years ago. Uh, and again, uh, I had a blast when I met him there. Um, he signed an autograph for me. It was shortly after, uh, Superman Returns came out. Right. Um, so he was the new Superman, Superman at that time. Right. Uh, so getting to meet him was awesome. Uh, then, uh, we've met him at several shows. One of the last shows we met him at was at Kansas City, right. uh, this past year. Right. And uh, when we met him there, uh, you know, here I am, I'm dressed as Superman, but when uh, we got to talking, uh, I got to talk to him about, uh, he plays in today's diverse world, uh, or 
with the way society is today. Uh, I love the TV show The Rookie. Right. Okay. It's got uh, Nathan Fillion in it as a uh, rookie officer. Well, now I guess he would be the. I guess there it's on season three or four now. I think. Right. And so he's not necessarily a rookie anymore, but right. you know there are rookie cops still coming in. Right. Uh, and it's one of them that uh, Brandon Ralph plays a cop a dirty in cop. a dirty cop right. in the show, and uh, they take it to. I mean, they show. Uh, Basically, from what I've seen of the snippets on YouTube, he plays the villain very well. He, yeah, he does. He, he, well, he, flat, well, how's he, this? I'll everything say he was doing was everything that that you they see drum into you in the academy not to yeah. do. He play flat out. He play. He plays a. He, yeah, he plays a bad cop uh, with a. Uh, Well, the racist side. <coughs> yeah. And uh, they end up, uh, and they hammering, they get, they, uh, you know, but it, it uh, unfortunately, it does show, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, but uh, I told, but I, and that's what we talked about. And he just turned, I flat out turned around, I said, I love your character. I, and it threw him off a little bit because I turned around and I said, hey, I, I love your character in The Rookie. And he just went, what? And I turned around and said, no, no. I said, I'm a cop. I was like, uh, I said, I'm a deputy sheriff. I've been one for over 20, so I've been one for over 20 years. I love the message that the show was bringing with your character right. on, you know, the, the, uh, uh, you know, you know, he got caught, right? You know, and it's like, we're going to, we're going to, you know, unfortunately, I think a couple issues, le- uh, a couple episodes later, uh, unfortunately, his character, instead of getting ousted as a bad cop, he gets, unfortunately, transferred to another department. And then right. his character, I believe his character is done after that. Right. Uh, or I, he, or something may actually happen to his character. I don't remember. Right. Uh, in just a couple other episodes, but again, he plays a bad cop in it, and they they end up finding a way. Uh, like I said, uh, the one uh, black officer, uh, you know, awesomely, you know. Takes down the bad cop, and yeah, which is yeah. He basically fed him enough rope that he hung himself. Yeah, yeah, and which uh, yeah. So, uh, so, but we got to talking a little bit about that, and I was like, "Thank you for uh, that." It was like one of them that, that you know, thank you for, uh, you know, that is stuff that happens. It does happen in the real world today, right? And it's one of, in our law enforcement offices, and. It's one of them things. Being able to see that message that that will not top that we don't tolerate that crap is right. you know. And because frankly, there's a lot of people out there that have this this thing that the thin blue line means that we, bad, we, bad cops are protected. No, no, that's hi not Mike. True, Mike Dalton. Hey, Mike, how's it going? No, I, I will flat out tell you right now. I don't. I, you know, my 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 blood runs blue thick, very very thick. Uh, my uh, uh, I you know my dad was a cop for four. My dad was a cop for forty two years, and I you know I see a cop that's overstepping the lines, doing something he's not supposed to be doing. By all rights, I will call him out on it. I I, I just I. I it's yeah no. I mean, I I live, breathe, and sacrifice. I have sacrificed a lot of family time and personal time to be able to wear the badge and protect my county and the and the citizens of this county uh, and the people I work with. And I will not ha- I, I I will not tolerate that. You know, I've put I've put my relationship on hold with my family. And uh, on many occasions, right, 
and I miss birthdays, Christmases, and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's there's and some I, times no, when you, uh -huh. you've had family time and suddenly got the call, we got an emergency situation, yes. and you've had to run out and hop in your rig and go at moments' notice. That, that, so that's, I've, that's the nature of the beast, guys. You know, I've been, you know, and but again, I, I just, sure. yeah, no. Again, I wear the Superman logo, logo pro, loud and proud, and I wear this thin blue line loud and proud as well. Uh, so it's one of those things. No, uh, so I want to thank all of my brothers and sisters that that uh, wear the badge out there for serving and protecting the uh, right. their communities and their. Uh, so definitely. Uh, and our, uh, well, not just the thin blue line, but the red, the gold, uh, the green, the gray. Uh, uh, the gray. So again, we all have a job. Again, a lot of it, it's a job. Yeah, it takes a, and it takes a specific kind of person to do the right job. So definitely want to uh, put a shout out to all of them and say, keep your head high and definitely, uh, you know, keep safe out there every day. Um, you know, and on top of that, we, uh, I, I do want to say this, uh, June not only is represent, uh, is supposed to be a uh, pride month, right? Uh, what they, what, uh, you know, I, I will say this and it's not, uh, uh, June is also me uh, men's mental health awareness month. Yes. So. Uh, for all you guys out there that, you know, have, uh, that need, uh, somebody to talk to, uh, don't, don't everybody ever check think, on your brothers. Yeah. You know, always check on your brothers. Always check on, uh, you know, uh, if you need somebody to talk to, please reach out. Uh, you know, you I mean, got believe, it, believe it or not, most suicides are men. Yeah. Okay. And, uh. Yeah, it, it, that, there, there seems to be more services for women in crisis than there are men. And that's not taking away from women. They need no. these things. Right. But men sometimes are overlooked for, yeah. they're expected to just man up and deal with the situation. And not every it, a lot of guys can be tamped right. down in 10 seconds. So, so to, to tell these men, hey, it's okay. To reach, not yeah. feel strong enough and need help. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to ask for help. Reach out, talk right. to somebody. Uh, you know, there is a text or call 988 uh, yes. the, for the suicide prevention hotline uh, if you need help. Yes. Uh, call, uh, you know, go to your, uh, if you just need somebody to talk to. Right. I, call up. Drive over to the PD and say, hey, I just want somebody to uh, talk to her. Call, drive over to the sheriff's office and ask somebody to talk to him. Uh, right. You know, we'll, you know, that's one thing. I will sit and I will. Well, I'm, I'm sure you guys have, have information on resources that are available to these individuals as well. So, yeah. So, again, like I said, uh, mental health is definitely a, a, a big one. Uh, so again, I mean, I'll flat, I'll tell you right now, um, uh, heroes for kids, that's a lot for me, you know, uh, being able to do stuff with my family. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff at work. Uh, I hear about a lot of stuff at work. Um, but you know what it, uh, um, again, so, uh, again, it's one of those things I, I have my. Um, I have my outlets that I use. So right. again, uh, I don't doubt you do too. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I mean, I started getting into the charity cosplay aspect uh, after a, a certain period in my life where just about everything that could go wrong was going wrong. My mom was diagnosed with cancer. My dad had diabetes, and and, and you know he had to have a part of his foot amputated. And, and my marriage was kind of going kaputs and my son was having health issues. There was a lot going on. And to tell you the truth, one of those is enough to kind of dock you for a loop and make you stumble a little yeah. bit. And I had it all happen at once. I was in pretty bad shape for a while there. And so getting out and doing this cosplay in community events and things kind of helped. And then he so, met me. And then, then, <laughs> met, 
Uh, they only hung and it all just blew up. Uh, suddenly I'm doing all this and I, I, I can't, I can truly say I've never had more fun in my life. Even my dad the other day, he was saying, you know, he said, even 10 years ago, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have thought you'd have made it, but he goes, he goes, now your life is 10 times better. And I, think, I think you're a better man for it because you, you've gotten to do this stuff. So, and he's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. He's, he's like, he's very proud of what we do. You know, he sees you like a second son. And he's just like, you guys, when I see you guys sit up or whatever, he goes, it does me proud. He's, he's oh. very, he's very pleased with us. If he didn't, if he didn't like it, he would tell. Oh, he would tell you like it is. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> he has, he has no filter, but sort of like me. But, yeah. but he, he, he would have been like, this is stupid. He doesn't do that. He says, he says, this is. You know, that was, you doing that was one thing. My dad's, my dad's past now. I don't know if they can see it on there, but I've got a picture of my dad up there on the wall. Right. Uh, you know, it was funny. I do. I did. I started watching Superman uh, and the Incredible Hulk, uh, George Reeves and Lou Ferrigno. Right. That's what I grew up. And then I went to the. Uh, uh, then I got into the <coughs> Christopher Reeves stuff. Right. Uh, and I blame my dad because my dad was the one that got me into it. The Lone Ranger, the uh, right. you know Roy Rogers, the John Wayne. I, I watched all of the. Heroes growing up, the Western and comic book. Uh, but it was funny, uh, you know, uh, growing up, I always looked at my dad as the superhero. And it's funny, you know, here it is, we've got the TV flipping through screensavers behind me. Right? But, you know, growing up, my dad, uh, unfortunately, growing up in the 80s uh, in St. Louis, we had a shelf about as wide as this TV right. uh, that was filled with, I'm going to throw my age out here, VHS tapes. And they had, and all those VHS tapes were videos. One whole shelf of it was videos of my dad. Unfortunately, at a crime scene. Right. Or, well, he was on the news. So it was a new, right. so... It was one of those things my mom would record the news. And that was how we watched my dad. That's how I got to see my dad a lot. So I got to see my dad as a hero, as, you know, Superman or as Batman or, as, you know, I got yeah. to see, I got to see in the light of, you know, I saw my dad in the same light as a lot of these heroes right. that we read about and watch on TV. You had to share him with the world because he was out safe. Yeah, Exactly. So, you know, uh, it was one of those things. And by the time I grew up enough, you know, and unfortunately it was one of those things I didn't have a lot of time with my dad growing up, right. but again, I got into the comic book stuff. Oh, and you know, you know how the dads are, oh, you need to get out and play baseball or football, or right. you need to do this in the yard and all you know, that stuff, get off the TV and, you know, comic books won't, won't mean nothing. And baseball cards won't right. mean nothing. Well, now, uh, you know, it's one of them things that, uh, oh. one thing I do regret, you know, but when I got, became a cop, uh -huh. it brought me, my dad and I closer to grind. Right. And it, you know, it was one of them things that, uh, you know, I could talk to him anytime I wanted to. Uh, we had a lot of conversations back and forth. And it helped me not only mentally, but physically and, uh, you know, with doing my job. Right. Uh, and, you know, it was one of those things that one thing that I do regret is my dad never got to see me dress as Superman. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. He's like, yeah, that stuff ain't going to mean anything and all this. And then when I told him that I started a charity organization where I dressed as Superman. Now at this time, uh, he had moved uh, away from the state of Missouri. Okay. And uh, I said, he never got to see me. Uh, but it was just pretty cool that, you know, it was one of those things, the love for a lot of the stuff that I do. 
is because of him. Right. So, you know, the love of Superman or the love, I'll sit down here and I'll, she'll, Jess will catch me, she'll come in from work or whatever, and she'll catch me in here watching an old Western. But, I mean, that's who I am. Right. Uh, but, or. And I usually sit down and watch it with you. Uh, but again, my love of my comics now, was my, because of my dad. You know, so my story I, is slightly different on that. Um, you know, dad mm-hmm. was the same way. I drew a lot. I was kind of artistic mm-hmm. when I growing up. I and, did a little bit. And but dad, dad was just like, that's, that's never going to pay the bills and right. all this stuff. So when I finally did get like a $600 check for designing the billboard, I was like, ha, ha, look, I'm making money like, drawing. Yeah, but but yeah, he was always he was always it's not going to go anywhere, and mom was like, "All right, so he's not into sports. He's not really into you know fixing cars and hunting and fishing and all the stuff that all the other boys seem to be into." But at least what he's looking at are people who are faced with overwhelming challenges who always do the right thing mm-hmm. and who want their word to be as good as their bond. Right. And if he grows up to be anything like that, that that's a good thing. Right. And dad goes, well, let me read a couple of comic books and see. So he got to read them and he was like, you know what? You're right. There is a good message here. Right. So he's, so um, when I was about 10, stocking stuffers at Christmas time, you know, he would put a, back then I think they cost like a quarter. He would put it in the comic book. I know, but he's old. Yeah, I'm old. So... There, there, strangely enough, the first the first uh, 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 comic I got was an action comic, and Superman was fighting some some being that lived on an electron, you know, that somehow he had expanded right. himself. And all, because Superman had all his vision powers, only he could see him. So he's the, the, the thing is rampaging, and he's he's fighting it. And to that casual observer, it looks like he's doing flips in air and, and just swinging at empty air and stuff. But he, he only he can see it. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So dad was like, well, do you want any other other heroes to? So I was like, yeah, I'll, you know, kind of like to see Spider-Man and check out some Batman. Well, he got me Batman and he got me Brave of the Bold. And he was mm-hmm. paired with... Batman was paired with Supergirl. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. There's a whole world here to explore. And so I got to thinking about it. You know, Batman is a human being. being. And yet he goes out there and he does the right thing, even knowing that he could very well get killed. That's kind of why I kind of gravitated toward Batman, because he was sort of the... he was a he was a normal guy that walked among the gods. Right. Okay. So he dared to be something more and greater. Ah, uh, yes. But well, see, and that's like for me, you're talking about your first comic. Funny thing is, is your your mom and dad bought you your first comic. My older brother bought my first comic book. I still have it to this day. Right. And uh, then. Uh, and again, my first comic book was Batman. Comic yeah, book. isn't that what I know? Yeah. Yeah. But again, I looked at my dad as a superhero. So, and again, that so my thing was was me looking at my dad as the superhero. Now, granted, my dad looked more like Batman out on on the TV because black uniform, utility right. belt, right? You know. But again, it was the it was the thing of I associated more with Superman because. We watched the George Reeve, Kirk Allen stuff <coughs> on TV. Right. So that's how I paired that together with my dad. Right. My dad actually bought my first comic. My dad actually bought me my first comic book back in '93 uh, during the death of Superman era. Oh, wow. uh, it was actually the graphic graphic novel of the uh, back when they called them graphic novels, not trade paperbacks. Uh, but the graphic novel, the thick graphic novel of the whole death of Superman, uh, that was before the funeral and all that other kind of stuff, and a world without Superman's uh, uh, storyline. Uh, but yeah, he bought me the graphic novel of the death of Superman, and it's just kind of ironic that 
and here again, guys, we do we go personal sometimes on this as well. Uh, you know, it's kind of ironic. The first comic book my dad buys me is was the death of Superman. Right. And now you've got the movie. My dad passed away. Right. I buried my dad. The weekend that came out. The weekend this come out in theaters. Right. Superman dies in this in this movie. Right. How ironic is that? That is. You know, I just. You know, it's just so. As many people hate watching this movie. It has a it has a value. sentimental value to it. So because again, like I said, it was right. dang it, I'm almost tearing up I'm just right. talking about it. Right. Uh so yeah, getting to see that, uh I mean it was almost like full circle. Right. Here it is, my dad never got my here it is, my dad was my superman. And what's that brain what's that uh Marlon Brando saying in the movie? Stella? No, the, uh in the Superman movie. Really? Oh. Uh, uh in the Superman in movie. In the Superman movie when he's talking to Superman. And uh, he's like where the uh, father becomes the father the, becomes the son and the, the son, son becomes, becomes the father. father. Yeah. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Yeah. My dad's a cop. Uh, My dad gets me into the Superman comic books. Right. Okay. Now you're a cop. I'm a cop. I'm into the Superman comic books, and then my dad passes, right? And it's all fits, right? With the Superman, you know, and you know, it it, it began with Superman. Mine and my dad's father son relationship began with Superman and ended with Superman. And now I'm carrying, trying to carry that from, yeah, with not only, you know, the love of Superman. Here I am, a cop, just like my dad, right? And now I'm playing Superman for the communities, right? And yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, it's ironic. A, it's amazing how it works out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, on that note, let's uh, get, get back into it. Let's yeah, you gotta wrap it up. And, uh, get, okay. get, well, again, July twentieth and twenty first, Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Uh, get your tickets are online. Uh, Jess, do you have anything before we get off of here? No. No. Okay. Dennis, gearing up for July Fourth of July and. Uh, Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Okay. okay. So yeah. So we're we're gonna be hitting in the brick suit and up. So we're, we're still gonna be fun busy two, for so we've got two weeks off. We're yeah. working on some stuff around uh around here at the house and with the and on and getting our Heroes for Kids Comic Con. Uh we've got uh so, June nineteenth in St. Peter's at the Heroes Couple. June 29th. June 29th, I'm sorry, at the Heroes Complex in St. Peter's. Right. We've got Fourth uh, of July weekend, whatever it is, uh, whatever they're playing it, whatever they're planning that here in Perryville. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we can do that. That'll be a big push for networking here in Perryville for Heroes for Kids Comic Con. July tenth for July. trivia at the Landmark. And then we have the weekend before Heroes July. for Kids Comic Con. We will be in Bridgeton, Missouri, at the Machinist Hall for Toy Man. July fourteenth. Huh? July 14th. July 14th and then July 20th and 21st, Heroes for Kids Comic Con. So please come out, please support. If uh, buy those tickets on our, uh, they're all available online at heroesforkidscomiccon.org. Uh, also check out our Facebook page, which you're on watching now. Uh, check out our Instagram page uh, with the same title, Heroes for Kids Perry Vomo. And also check out our YouTube page, which we have a lot of other videos on there. <clears throat> Man, some fun stuff that we do as well. We gotta get some more fun videos and stuff to post on there. Right. Um, 
But we like won't. and subscribe, and that yep. way, if it ends up becoming monetized, all that can go toward well, our heroes, charity. Yeah, our charity and heroes for kids. Yeah. So, uh, so we uh, love everybody. Yeah. Thank you, uh, and good night. Good night.